In the middle of our Newfoundland trilogy here, we enter into France and spend some time in Fête Basque before making our way to St. John's. I took the bike on a ferry and I crossed a small channel to the French colony of saint pierre et miquelon This is an island that was established in the late 17th century, mainly created as a curing and salting operation for codfish. There were some rough times for the British, but what French history doesn't involve that. And after World War I, the island was largely re-inhabited by Basque, Norman, and British inhabitants. Just by luck, I happened upon the island during one of the largest festival periods, Le Fête Basque. This is a local holiday meant to remind the inhabitants of the origins of the island and their Basque connections. The name of the game is Pelota. It is a game that looks very similar to racquetball, an open court, and the history can be traced to ancient Greece. It's played by serving the ball off the wall and scoring by hitting the ball so the other team is unable to return the serve before the ball bounces twice. Watching the festival, I became hungry and quickly assimilated. The festival's day was rounded out by a strong man competition. It was very amusing and fun to watch. The whole community came out to cheer on their favorite strong man. Hopping the ferry again, I crossed back into Newfoundland where I entered a landscape that was quickly covered by fog. It cast a very ominous shadow and presence over the landscape, and I began to be on the lookout for both moose and or vampire, both of which could be possibilities. The rumor had it there would be very heavy rain that evening, and so I found a convenience store and was very happily put up for the night. In the morning, I did awake to some heavy rain, which accumulated to four inches of rain within a 30-minute span. I left, and I found a car museum on the way to St. John's. I had stopped at this museum a few days prior to fill up my water bottles, wherein I met the owner, Vernon, and I saw a glimpse of his toys. I knew I would return, and I was very pleased to have done so. The cars themselves were amazingly unique, with some being one-of-a-kind originals, and others having new rarities such as record players built within the car. Vernon took me on a very wonderful tour. It's a 1970 LS6 Chevelle and there are guys out there that would almost sell their soul for this car. For example, they only made 50 with an LS6 uh, engine under the hood, which is a 454 with a 450 horsepower. This car has 3,671 miles. It's okay? incredible. The, uh, the cowl induction, I mean the overspray still on the hoses, none of the manifold, exactly the way she rolled off the line. The Delco uh, Energizer battery. This car, for example, has original tires, would you believe? Okay. I mean, that's incredible. 50 year old tires. The exhaust system is original. And in addition to that, you know, the mufflers. I mean, you're going to get a chuckle out of this one. If you don't have a bad back, you should get down on your knees and look up at the mufflers because you're never going to believe what I'm going to tell you. All right. In addition to being original, and they're just up past the rear end, just further down, you see the mufflers yeah. with the part numbers on them? I do. Well, how about the last two digits on one number 19, the other one a 20? Now, what are the chances of that happening coming down the assembly line? That's fantastic. Right. 1967 Shelby. A 1968 Shelby. A 1969. Sixty nine Mustang, sixty 
Is that one? 1954. 54, eh? The Kaiser Darren. 435, and that's all we're made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fiberglass body. Just weighs in at 2,100 pounds. Okay. And the kids come here, the high school kids, for the graduation every year, for the family pictures. Oh, okay, yeah. Then we yeah. take them to church and carry them their choice. Sure. sure yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, of the, one of the girls was dressed to match that one this year. Oh, okay. You just play. First of all, we have a 1969 Firebird Ram Air 4. Now, Ram Air 4 makes all the difference in the world, and it, this has to basically do with uh, the performance of the car, uh, the internal engine components. For example, this would have uh, larger cylinder heads, uh, bigger camshafts, uh, aluminum intakes, uh, all to do with additional horsepower. Sure. So, uh, they only made 12 of those with the Ram Air 4 in a convertible with a four-speed standard shift. And when I looked at this car in Chicago about three and a half years ago, all I saw was a, a frame, a shell basically, on a rotisserie, and surrounding it were boxes and boxes of parts supposedly to put this thing back together. And as you can imagine, I was quite nervous because to uh, compound uh, the problem, uh, if I bought the car, I was going to move it from its current location in Chicago over to Colorado for restoration. So the big concern was how was I supposed to know that all the parts were there? Well, the first order of business was to bring the professionals in and make sure that this car had the Ram Air 4 uh, engine that it was born with. Because as you can imagine, with this whole roll of muscle cars here, you know, the crap got kicked out of back in the day. Often Certainly. Not on a Friday afternoon, and by Saturday, you know, there was a, a rod down through the engine or out through the engine or whatever, yeah. right? So, and uh, so to find, you know, cars with the original drivetrain is a very, very rare occurrence, especially when they only made 12. So believe it or not, after he did his assessment, he, he verified that, yes, this car was definitely born with the Ram Air 4 engine. This one is a fun car. It is amphibious. It's a German company. It was tested up this last Saturday by Vernon, and he said it went without a leak. However, it was not as fun on a uh, road surface as there is no uh, suspension. Two fans in the back provide the propellers, enough power. Nineteen twenty nine Cadillac, three thousand four hundred dollars when purchased new. This is a thirty one Cadillac, thirty eight hundred dollars when purchased new. This is a 33 Chrysler Imperial. Only 36 were ever made. In 1929, what could $1,850 get you? It could get you this car, a Willis Knight. Three-speed manual. Only 250 were made with this paneling. 400 in total were made. No rumble seat in the back. On my way out of the museum, Vernon's wife Rhonda had packed me a lunch, giving me enough energy to make it all the way into St. John's, where I met up with my host Matt, and I brought him to meet George and Parham, who had also finished their journey into St. John's. George had brought me a gift. Two weeks earlier, I had given George a bottle of SpaghettiOs I had purchased as George owned a can opener, and I did not. George had been carrying this bottle with him for 800 kilometers just to give it back to me. I shouldn't be surprised as it was later found out that George and Parham had been carrying a package of beef jerky since Alberta. When you're bike touring, every little piece of weight does add up, and I was impressed and blown away 
at the strength and fortitude George had to carry a gift for me such a long way. We left Tim Hortons and headed off to Cape Spear. Along the way, there was an ominous clicking sound coming from George's bike. I always get jealous when somebody else's bike repairs. I've been doing it so much on this road, I figured that it should be me. But today was George's turn. That's so weird, eh? George and Parham rounded up their trip at Cape Spear. It was really special to celebrate with them. At the end of their journey, I had them both sign this can of SpaghettiOs and we'll just see how far it goes. George was nice and he signed his name and right above it, Parham, instead of signing his name, wrote for a good time call. I'll miss these two. After we got to the furthest eastern point in North America, Cape Spear, we turned around and directed our attention to Kitty Vitty Brewery. This is a brewery that creates beer brewed from the glacial water of icebergs commonly found off the Newfoundland coast. Next week will be the last in our three-part Newfoundland series as I take the bike south into Nova Scotia to end the trip in Halifax. Special thanks this week to Vernon and Rhonda for the amazing tour and the packed lunch. Matt and Steph, I know I told you guys I'd be there for one day and ended up staying for nine. You'll meet more of them next episode. And George and Parham, it was wonderful as always.